Hi YouTube, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I'm watching uh, Archaics. He's got a lady on there that, um, well, she went to Catholic girls school, but she's Muslim. Used to be Muslim. I was thinking before I even got on here talking about everybody that's Oh, forbidden knowledge or hidden truth or mystery religions. Does anybody else besides me get really sick of all these? It's like an empty promise. You click on somebody's channel. They say they have information for you and then you go on there. And it's just the same old, same old. Like I say, it's like they're piecing it out. It's like you're playing go fish with a deck of cards. and Or or you're playing gin rummy or whatever. And you, or spades. You only have so many cards or poker. And you need some more cards to complete your hand. But you never have those other cards is what it feels like. To me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this lady was talking about all the different things in the Quran. Like, um, oh, well, like her husband could have like four wives. She was talking about she didn't really even read the whole thing until she was in her 20s. And then... Um, going through a divorce with a couple of kids to to raise, she's thinking to herself, there's got to be more to this, you know. And especially after going to a Catholic girls' school, holy smokes, with the nuns and the whole smear. I know what that's like. But anyway, so um, she's she's says like she says she's not an expert but and like Jason said too you know we're not I'm not out to insult my Muslim friends at all I'm looking at the commonalities that we have um you know in in our belief towards God not not the things that separate us you know but Jason's like, I'm not out to come against the Muslim community in this lady. She's like, neither am I. And she goes, <laughs> like, okay, I like her. That's funny. It's not funny, but it's funny, you know. I told some Muslim friends on my Facebook, too, you know. It's like, you might do that over the over there, but. I mean, you could try it over here in the United States, but I would guarantee, unless you're a Mormon, that most people in the world would like one faithful relationship. And most men and women have trouble enough dealing with one spouse, let alone more of them. But, you know, it's just... <laughs> but anyway, I am going to share this um live stream in my community and on facebook i think it's um a really good idea that people see the commonalities in different religions it's just like myth vision today had a good video on the myths fables tales folklore folk yeah, folklore, folklores from around the world that have the um, dying and resurrecting God in their motif. It's not just one area of the world. This is really common all over the world. The things that we all have in common is what I really like to look at. I'm, you know, like I say, not the separative things, but. You know, so anyway, I don't know. We might have a little bit of interruption. It probably isn't going to be a big deal. I don't really have a lot on my mind. 
aside from sharing this woman's information, I mean, the conversation itself about, um, <laughs> it even says in the Quran how, how a certain demographic of people changed the teachings. And I've read it. I know that for myself. I read I read a version of the Quran that doesn't have chapters. It is all one text. It's uh, from beginning to end. There is no separation or chapters. There's no chapters in it, like um, First Kings or whatever. There's none of that. It's a text of their teachings, and there it is, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, that's how I read the Bible. The first time I didn't study it in segments or word for word, you know, figuring what the actual language is in there, <laughs> um, was I just sat down and started reading it, and I'd read it to my kids, like, out by the bonfire, or whatever, you know, daylight hours you know, till it got dark and for something to do. But, uh, and I had done it before in my life, before pre-children too, but I mean, I'm just, I think that's the best way to actually understand that some of the end of what it is is actually supposed to be in the beginning. And when they say, well, you go back here and you go back there and compare this and compare that, why? Who, who effed up God's diary, huh? It had to have been somebody. Like I said, if you're going to the original form of the text, there wouldn't need to be a translation. You would only need somebody that could read that language. And that's, that's the type of experts that are required to uncover this trickery that's going on with everybody's bullies, you know, or non-belief. So. Yeah, I'll leave that link in here. That's probably about it for today. There's gonna, there is going to be a little more noise here, so, um, I'll make a longer video, I'm sure, tomorrow. I just, I, I had a lot of stuff to do online. Doug asked me to look some things up, so I was rather busy for a while like that. And if you, you know what screen time is, sometimes it's like, got to get away <laughs> from it, you know, that type of, so, yes, there's our noise. <laughs> it's not intentional, I'm sure, but, you know. Okay, everybody, I appreciate you joining me. Maybe check out our KX. That's the place where you are going to find out that a year isn't how they used to count the calendar. Um, he's got total proof of it. There's other cultures that speak of it, too. Um, the year wasn't 365 days. They counted their calendars in a shower, a turning of the stars like every 30 days or so. So when they say somebody was 9,000 years old, no, they weren't. If people would just realize what they were doing in Egyptian times. And did you know that there's people that came out of Africa into Ethiopia Egypt through Indo-European crossed the land bridge 140,000 years ago and are Native American actually from Egypt. Isn't that a trip? True story. So, okay, everybody. Have a really good night or day wherever you're at. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA.